New from Studio Canal on 4K UHD is Cross of Iron, Sam Peckinpah's 1977 film all about German soldiers and, um, well, one of them on the hunt for the Cross of Iron. The Iron Cross. The, the, the thing shows that you've excelled in war. And here we have two vying characters. We've got James Coburn as Steiner, a battle hardened war weary veteran who is is tired of everything that's going on he's tired of the politics of the people that don't get their hands dirty in this war of having to do the most atrocious things uh, because that's what they're supposed to do and it's such a wonderful character as we follow uh, Steiner all the way through this as we start to see his disillusionment growing throughout with the way the war is going and the things they have to do. Shoot him. You shoot him, sir. Everything kind of takes a change when uh, Captain Stransky turns up, a man who is determined to get himself the Iron Cross, who wants that, who needs that to go back into his affluent society, where he can show off his war medals and get the plaudits that go with it. He doesn't really want it um, for the act itself or for taking part in the war or having a big impact. He just wants it for the sake of wanting it. And his actions lead to lots of people being put in danger as he quests for something that is pretty much pointless and he doesn't understand the ramifications of getting such a medal. Why do you want it so badly? It's just a piece of worthless metal. And the movie kind of uh, plays fast and loose with these characters um, at the start of it, as we see the kind of war of words uh, that go on between these two, because they kind of need each other. The captain is the captain of the, the platoon. He is the man in charge. Uh, Steiner is the veteran, the person who seems to be an almost mythic-like figure in the German army who can do the impossible. And it's seeing how they kind of interact and how uh, Steiner has this constant appreciation and the constant want to look after his men. He sees them as a family unit. He um, treats them hard, works them hard, but he would do anything to protect them. Duty is to us, the platoon, and me. You fulfill those responsibilities or you will have a bayonet up your ass. And the, the, this is where the kind of real interesting parts for me came in the second half of the movie. In the first half, you're kind of wondering how it's going to play up. You know, the war is hell uh, motif is all the way through this. Seeing these characters being put in situations that they really don't want to be in is interesting. But the second half really puts more of a, a kind of plot into this as we find our characters being abandoned, left behind by uh, Stransky, who has relied on Steiner to kind of write a statement about him getting the Iron Cross. Steiner is really not wanting to do it because he doesn't see any actions in Stransky that deserves that. Uh, and Stransky deliberately leaves him and his platoon behind as they make a retreat from their position. And this was truly exciting for me as we watch uh, Steiner stuck behind enemy lines, having to travel a large period of distance through swaths of enemy soldiers and try to get back to relative safety. And I say relative safety because Stransky's there. And Stransky really doesn't want these people to make it back safe and sound. And it adds so much tension and suspense and excitement into that second half of the film. It, primarily because it's driven by conflict, it's driven by a plot, a narrative and a purpose and it feels more uh, put together stronger in that second half. The first half is good uh, but it, it kind of floats in between and doesn't seem to have that cohesive hole at the start of it but the idea of a soldier being so disillusioned but knowing that he's good at it and knowing that he wants to look after his men was fantastic. The violence is 
harsh and brutal at times. There's a, a particular moment where they're going to take out a, an enemy unit at a bridge. There's a moment where they stumble across an almost female infantry, um, which has all different types of connotations that are going on there, um, but it just it fuels the anxiety. It's horrible, but man, it's exciting. This definitely is a, a interesting film. I feel that it's a really strong film as well, but definitely finishes off on a strong second half more than the first half. I think Coburn is excellent. I think Maximilian Schell is uh, excellent as the, the city horrible Stransky as well. Great deal of fun. And of course the transfer. The transfer is absolutely fantastic on this one. There is of course a host of extras on this steelbook. Let's dive in, have a little look, see what they have to offer. So here we are in the extras of disc one of Cross of Iron. Let's go to the special features. Here you see we have an audio commentary by filmmaker and film historian Mike Siegel. We have a promoting Steiner which is 10 minutes 22 seconds. This is a various uh, lobby cards, art cards from around the world. Steiner on the set uh, is 20 minutes 30 and there's 100 stills uh, from around the set showing behind the scenes pictures. Filming Steiner is 9 minutes 17. This is part one. This is from 35 millimeter film pictures that were taken around the set. And this is part two of it, which is nine minutes, seven seconds. And also nine minutes and seven seconds is Steiner in colour. A hundred stills in colour from the set of Cross of Iron. All of these extras are just visual uh, without any kind of audio over it other than music. Just showing pictures of the scene uh, as it was being made. That's the extras for disc one. Here we are in disc two for Cross of Iron. First up we have Passion and Poetry, Sam Peck and Paz War, which is 48 minutes 21. It's um, a couple of the actors, people who were on set, talking about their experience of making the film and their interactions with Sam Peck and Paz. You know, 48 minutes, it covers a lot of material. It's great. Kruger's Kisses Cairns is 8 minutes 53. Um, this was probably the funnest of all the extras because it was just anecdote he tells about meeting Peck and Pat and falling out with him which was great. Vadim and Sam, father and son is 6 minutes 9 seconds and this is another cut off from one of the interviews from Sam Peck and Pat's war, it's just a nice little anecdotal story uh, similarly, cutting room floor is 4 minutes 29, it's one of the actors are, uh, from Sam Peck and Pat's war talking again pretty much about the amount of material that was covered and being to the cutting room and just seeing it all there. Apparently he cuts uh, 64 kilometres of film. Steiner in Japan is a, a weird little oddity, 2 minutes 6 and just covers the say, advertisements that Coburn and Peckinpah made while on the promotional tour for Cross of Iron. Mike's home movies, Steiner and Kaisel meet again is 7 minutes 85, I think it was filmed around about 2000 when they were doing a big pecking power retrospective and it's just it's a home video footage of out and about visiting sites and, and seeing some of the people, the actors that were there for that um, retrospective. On location, um, there's multiple of these are all audio interviews with stills placed over them. We've got Sam Peckinpah, James Coburn, Maximilian Shell, James Mason and David Warner. And they kind of range um, from 4 minutes 51 to 6 minutes 23. Great little tidbits, easy to watch, uh, easily digestible and some good information. We also get the US-UK trailer, German trailer and the US TV spot. And that's the extras for disc 2 of Cross of Iron. There we have it. Cross of Iron, Sam Peckinpah's 4K release from Studio Canal. I would say, yep, you definitely want to check this one out um, if you're into the kind of war movies of that time. It's a little bit different, um, but 
well worth checking out. Great performances, great action, well shot. Yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts of Cross of Iron. Let me know in the comment box below whether you love it, hate it, find it average. Where do you think it lands in Peck and Paz filmography? As always, there's more content up here. You can see more of my stuff. In the description box below are links to the Patreon membership program, manvfilm.com. Always in which you can support me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.